11 Alive News at 5 p.m. starts now. Hurricane Ian making landfall less than two hours ago as a powerful Category 4 storm in southwestern Florida. The rough winds ripping through the state, pounding everything in its path. This is wild and crazy right now. Just didn't expect it to be this bad here. But the historic storm is not done yet. It may appear to be calm at some point. In the backside of that will get very, very nasty. And Florida is not the only state in Ian's path. Georgia is also bracing for what's to come, hoping for the best. We are prepared, we're ready, we're continuing to watch. There's no need for panic in the state of Georgia. First at five, a live look in Naples, Florida, courtesy of EarthCam. You can see the water is very close to that pier there, and there's a lot of waves. Hurricane Ian making landfall as a Category 4 hurricane just after 3 o'clock along the southwestern coast of Florida near Cayo Costa. Let's get you straight over to our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, with the latest on Ian's path. So, Chris, where is the storm right now? Well, we're going to be tracking it as it's moving inland now, and it's going to cross over the peninsula of Florida. And even though it is inland, it is still a strong storm, and it's going to be impacting a lot of people. It impacts more than just where it makes that landfall. Now you see the center of the storm uh, that has already crossed over those barrier islands and is over Fort Myers right now, pretty much the eye of the storm there. This is between Port Charlotte and also Bonita Springs. It will keep crossing over the Florida Peninsula, and as it does, what happens is the warm Warm water is the fuel for these storms, and that fuel is cut off now that it's over land, so the storm is going to weaken, but still giving them a lot of rain and wind over central Florida. We even have a tornado watch in effect on the east coast there with some of these bands that will be coming around that have the potential for tornadoes. So here's the latest after making landfall with max winds at 150 miles an hour. It's now down to 140 mile an hour wind. Still category four though, crossing over the peninsula, becoming a tropical storm, and then it actually moves back out over the Atlantic. And as it does, it may pick up a little more strength once again, and then move inland again, right there on the Georgia South Carolina line as a tropical storm. And that would be mainly during the afternoon hours here on Friday. So. The Georgia coast is going to be under the gun next as we see a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch in effect for our coast and then it moves up into South Carolina. This track keeps moving a little bit more to the east and as it does, we still expect some impacts here, but as it moves more to the east, our impacts will be a little bit lower. We're still expecting the potential for some rain and some breezy conditions for Friday and also into Saturday. But here you see those uh, watches and warnings here, tropical storm warning along the Georgia coast as well as a hurricane watch. We also have storm surge warnings in effect on the Georgia coast too. We'll talk more about that time out when we would see our better chances for rain and some of those stronger winds coming up in just a little bit. All right, Chris, thank you so much. Well, here's a live look from Tampa right now. This is the Sunshine Skyway Bridge that remains closed and we'll have a live report coming from Tampa on the conditions there in just a couple of minutes. Right now, there is a focus in Georgia on how the storm could impact our coast. Governor Brian Kemp says the state is actively moving resources to prepare for the storm. Tonight, he is warning people in the southern part of our state and along the coast to be on alert as the storm approaches. I would just uh, remind Georgians to stay weather alert, uh, especially if you're in the southern half of the state. We think there's going to be certainly uh, a lot of rain and, and not a sustaining high winds, but certainly gust in the 40 to 50 miles an hour. We'll have much more on the governor and GEMA's preparations coming up at 530. From power companies to nonprofits, crews across Georgia are preparing to quickly respond to people and cities impacted by the storm. And much of that focus here in Georgia has been on the southern part of our state and the coastline. 11 Alive's Joe Hinkie spoke with Georgia Power and the American Red Cross this afternoon as they track the storm as well. Right now, Georgia Power and the American Red Cross here have crews either on standby or position in locations that will allow them to be able to respond as safely and quickly as possible after the storm passes. We're now pivoting to focus most of our resources on the coastal part of Georgia because it does look like that's where you're going to be most impacted. Susan Everett is the executive director of the American Red Cross of East Central Georgia. This is Red Cross video of volunteers in Florida working ahead of Hurricane Ian. Everett says here in Georgia, around 50 volunteers Volunteers are heading toward the coast with more on standby. Everybody will be in place by 8 o'clock tonight. 
and then we'll see what happens with the storm where it lands and we have backflow of people that we can send into wherever that's needed as well. Everett says crews have supply trailers staged already in key spots to open shelters post storm. Teams will also be ready to walk neighborhoods assessing damage and connecting people with needed assistance and handing out kits to help clear debris. Inside the Georgia Power Storm Center, they're watching the storm's shifting path to assess where power crews are needed. After the storm passes, damaged crews begin their assessment of like the hardest hit areas and then that kind of makes a determination of you know how soon power can be restored with the down lines. Alicia Brown says the storm will be monitored from here in Atlanta and customers can report an outage or check a repair status on Georgia Power's website. For a storm of this size, Georgia Power has crews on standby along with extra help from other states. We've already began to secure resources from other utilities and they've already began to mobilize and be ready to send help this way. And everyone with the American Red Cross tells me they know blood drives in Florida and parts of Georgia that are hit will be canceled, but there will still be a need for blood. So one way that you can help from here in Atlanta is by donating blood. Reporting in Atlanta, I'm Joe Henke, 11 Alive News. Yeah, really good advice there, Joe. By the way, Hurricane Ian making landfall on the west coast of Florida just after 3 p.m. today, packing sustained winds near 155 miles per hour, and officials now are fearing this storm could turn catastrophic. NBC's Chris Pallone is live in Tampa with the very latest on the conditions there. Chris? Yeah, Ron, good evening. What a difference about 100 miles makes here in Tampa. It's kind of been Hurry up and wait. All day long, we've been seeing feeder bands and the uh, the northern tip of this storm coming in, but it's really been, you know, some heavy rain, some heavy wind, and then we could go an hour without any rain. Uh, certainly a relief to people who live here in the Tampa area. At first, it looked like this storm was going to come straight here up Tampa Bay, which could have been catastrophic for the area, this metro area of two and a half, three million people. But with the turn in the storm making landfall closer to Fort Myers here in Tampa, it looks like they are going to dodge the worst of it. Now, the mayor says that's not to mean that people should get complacent here. As a matter of fact, the police department was out shooing some sightseers away from uh, from the uh, the uh, along the bay here, Bayshore Drive, uh, because people seemed to think that the weather was fine and they went out into it. But to our south, they are really, really getting the worst of it. They are getting up to 18 feet of storm surge, uh, enough to submerge two story homes. They're getting high winds. Their power is out. Their electricity is out. It's really a devastating situation, and I'm sure in the days ahead, we'll see just how bad it really was. And it's not just a local event. This storm is going to go to central Florida. Orlando could be heavily affected with power outages, trees and power lines down. And then it'll go off to the east coast, uh, probably cause some, some flooding and as well some storm surge up all the way in the Jacksonville area before going into Georgia and heading out to sea. So uh, it really depends. Your storm experience depends on where you are. We're starting to see more effects of the storm as it slowly crawls northward. But people in Tampa right now would not trade places with people down on the beaches of, of Naples and of Fort Myers because they are really going through it right now. Yeah, they're really getting hammered. Chris, thanks a lot for that perspective. We really appreciate that live report from Tampa, Florida. By the way, Georgia is welcoming evacuees as they head up Interstate 75 to escape that storm. The governor opened the state's parks for people seeking refuge, and the Atlanta Motor Speedway is offering family camping sites as well. Caitlin Ross is live there for us this evening, and Caitlin, they're ready to offer that help, but there aren't too many takers just yet. So far, no one's come here to the Atlanta Motor Speedway, but certainly we've seen a lot of folks on the road that have those Florida tags. They came to Georgia trying to escape the path of the storm, but everyone I talked to today said they were on their way here to stay with family and friends. Blue, hey, hi. Evacuees, two-legged and four, are driving through Georgia tonight to escape Ian. It's the rain and coming in, um, power outages, hopefully that that's not going to be you know, days or weeks. Rashawn Simmons packed up his family and his pups when he got the alert Ponte Vedra Beach was under a mandatory evacuation. How are we going to work? You know, how are we going to eat? Everything's shut down. Can't get gas. Like, there's all, all the craziness. He says a lot of people from his neighborhood chose to stay and ride out the storm. I think a lot of people still have the mentality of this is not a big deal. Nothing's going to happen. You know, we're going to stay and ride this out. Um, 
So there wasn't a lot of traffic. It was actually pretty, pretty easy. They're heading to Sugar Hill, Georgia to stay with family, but hope to be back home as soon as possible. We have to see maybe Friday, maybe Saturday. It really depends on what it's actually going to do. You know, there's still a lot of uncertainty, so we're not sure yet. So much uncertainty, wondering what his home is going to look like when he goes back to it. He and his wife both work from home, so he says he can't be there without power. So right now they're just crossing their fingers and hoping that they escaped the worst of it. Reporting live at the Atlanta Motor Speedway, Caitlin Ross, 11 Alive News. Yeah.